And welcome into this week's weekend recap where we bring up to speed on everything you need to know in the world of pit sports, everything to get you ready for the week, everything that you'll want to be talking about and you'll want to know about as you head into the new week. I'm Chris Peak from PantherLair.com. You know that website, Panther-Lair.com, Pittsburgh.Rivals.com. It's the most comprehensive source. Pit sports news on the internet, football, basketball, recruiting. We bring you it all on PantherLair.com. And of course, we have message boards where as I always like to say, you're interacting with hundreds and thousands of other Pitt fans. I mean, this is the, the the best online community of diehard Pitt fans that you're going to find anywhere. Pitt fans who are committed to the cause, sitting around all day, every day, talking about Pitt. And if you're a Pitt fan, what more could you want? You read all the content we provide, the interviews, the articles, the videos, the analysis, all that stuff. You read all that stuff. You consume the content. And then you go to the message boards and have the conversation about it. It's a perfect combination. It's a one-stop shop. Everything you need as a Pitt fan. And of course, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash pantherlair.com, we add in even more Pitt coverage. Like our Wednesday night live stream where we go live from 8.30 to 9.30 every week for a live Pitt talk show. You get in the comments and uh, the, the chat section there and post your comments and your questions I talk for a while, I read your comments and respond to those and answer the questions. We have we have a back and forth. We have a, a real kind of pit talk show going on on Wednesday nights right here on youtube.com slash pantherlaircom. And then every Monday morning we have this, the weekend recap. Just to get you up to speed on everything that happened over the last week, everything that happened over the, you know, through the week, uh, or through the weekend, excuse me, and everything you're going to need to know to get ready for the new week. I, I would say when you go into the office this morning, you go into work, or, or you're around other Pitt fans, what are you going to need to know? What are you going to want to be talking about? We kind of bring you up to speed and get you ready to go right here on the weekend recap. So first thing we always got to ask, subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash pantherlaircom, and like this video. That's a big help to us, uh, help kind of spread the word about this and continue to um, grow the YouTube channel, which we're trying to do, provide more pit content on the uh, the video side of things, the YouTube side of things, and that's the way you can help us by subscribing to the channel. And then, uh, you know, I think we have a subscribe button right there. You probably can see it. Uh, and then also just liking the video is, is a big boost as well. So what's going on this week? What do we need to be paying attention to? What are we going to be watching out for? Number one right there is a decision coming on the starting quarterback job. This is really one of the open jobs one of the bigger storylines of training camp but we'll talk about storylines in a second but Keaton Slovis or Nick Patty I mean you know what I think you know what I've been saying basically since Slovis was recruited he was recruited to be the starting quarterback he came to Pitt to be the starting quarterback the Pitt coaches pursued him and and recruited him and ultimately landed him because they wanted him to be they believed he could come in and be the starting quarterback and nothing that's happened in spring camp and nothing that's happened in training camp through the first three weeks has changed my view and I think really anyone's view on what's likely to happen there. Keaton Slovis is going to be named the starting quarterback. The question though, the only real question is when? I think there's a pretty good chance it's going to happen this week. This is an inside, this is not inside info. It's just sort of me piecing together, you know, reading the tea leaves, I guess, and looking at this situation and that situation and saying, yeah, it's probably going to be this week. Pat Narduzzi speaks to the media three times this week, Monday morning, uh, Tuesday morning, and Thursday morning, speaks before practice three times this week, and then they've got the kickoff luncheon on Friday. I don't think he'll announce a starting quarterback at the kickoff luncheon on Friday, My thought is he'll do it one of these three days this week. It could be today. It could be Monday. Um, Might be tomorrow. Might be Thursday. But my guess is one of these three days, Pat Narduzzi will announce that Keaton Slovis is the starting quarterback. Now, the the thing about all of this, as we talk about it, and we can compare Slovis and Patty, I I really do believe both guys can move the offense. I I mean, I think you could even roll the, the clock back to the Peach Bowl. Forget the first drive of the game. I mean, you, you've heard me say it a million times. That was a fluke, weird drive where the, the kickoff, the game opening kickoff, dies at the two. Izzy Abanacanda lets it go because he thinks it's going to roll into the end zone, which is what that ball, that kick would have done 99 times out of 100. It would have 
hit where it hit and rolled into the end zone for a touchback and they started the 25 and everything goes from there but instead the ball just dies and so they end up with this terrible short field position uh short field situation it's really tough to dig out of now when they have a normal possession normal starting field position on the second drive nick patty drives him down the field it's unconventional it doesn't necessarily look great but it ends up with a touchdown unfortunately a touchdown that took nick patty out of the game after he busted his shoulder but i believe he can move the offense such a small sample size with Nick Patty, but when you look over the course of his career, when he's gotten an opportunity, he's made plays and he's led, he's he's moved the offense and he's in some situations made some big plays to help win games. The UCF game in 2019, um, the full game that he played against Delaware a week later, when he stepped in at Florida State as a goal line touchdown machine uh, in 2020 when Nick uh, when uh, Kenny Pickett was all banged up, he's he's he has capitalized on opportunities. He hasn't gotten many of them, but he has made the most of them. And I think his teammates respect him for it. I think his teammates believe in him. I think they believe he can move the offense down the field. And so I don't think he's a bad option. I just think Keaton Slovis is a better option. I think Keaton Slovis has a better arm. I think he's got NFL arm talent. Um, you can watch some of the videos we've put out. You, you can talk to people around the program, people who've watched practice, people who know more about these things than I do. He's got NFL arm talent. Keaton Slovis does. And and I think that's really what separates is that both quarterbacks can move the offense down the field. Um, both quarterbacks can make pretty much all the throws. Slovis can make more of those big throws. Uh, I think he makes good decisions. He's not he's not as mobile as Patty, but he can he can move a little bit. He can be sharp, he can be accurate, and he can attack. He can attack downfield. Uh, with big time throws Uh, i mean there are even people who will tell you that he might have a better arm a a more nfl caliber arm than kenny pickett did i haven't seen enough of slovis to say whether or not that's the case although there's ample you know evidence of his performance at usc but i think suffice to say he's got a big time arm and and that's ultimately what separates it is not just who can move the offense, who can give you a chance to win, but who gives you the best chance to win? Who gives you the best chance to uh, you know, attack and, and score a lot with his arm? And I think that's what Slovis gives you opportunity to do. They're going to have a more balanced offense this year. They're going to run the ball more, but you need that quarterback who can really, if you have two quarterbacks, you go with the guy who can make the big time plays. And I think that's, that's Slovis. And so, whether it's today, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's Thursday, I think we're going to see um, Pat Narduzzi come out and, and officially name Keaton Slovis the starter and have a pretty good backup behind him. Moving on to point number two, it is the final week of training camp. Three full weeks down. They've got a handful of practices this week. Like I said, I think they practice Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Um, I don't think that there's no media availability on Wednesday. I don't think they have a practice on Wednesday. Uh, but they have Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and then they have the kickoff luncheon on Friday. And then it's regular game week. Slightly irregular because it's a Thursday night game, but you're jumping into the first game week of the regular season. So a week from today, Pat Narduzzi will hold his first noon press conference, his first in-season press conference of the season. You know, it'll be a shortened schedule because the game is on Thursday, but here it is. It's really, really coming up with just a handful of practices this week. And the coaches will start moving into West Virginia prep and sliding out of that training camp mode. The players will move out of the hotel in the south side, and it really will become the season. Training camp, it's not over, but that end is coming up real quick. And I always feel like by the time they get to, uh, I forget what hotel they have the kickoff luncheon in on Friday, everybody's all cleaned up, everybody's all fresh-looking, they're ready to turn the page and turn that corner and head into the regular season. What are we looking for this week? The quarterback naming is, you know, the quarterback declaration is really the main thing uh, as far as uh, kind of reportable news, if you want to call it that. And then you really just need to stay healthy through this last week, these last few practices. They've had some guys get banged up. There are a few guys who have been limited, either came into camp being a little bit limited or have been limited due to in-camp injuries or nicks or bruises or whatever it is. It doesn't seem that there's anything 
major on the two deep uh, as far as guys being out for the season. But there will be a couple of positions that will be interesting to see who gets on the field and who's available um, on, on Thursday night, on September 1st. You'd like to think Pat Narduzzi will give us some indication of that, but we've also all watched this for eight years, and we know that's probably not likely. But you're really at a point now in training camp. You, you've accomplished most of the work, and I think the coaches will tell you they have some work they want to do this final week. They, they want guys to stay focused and stay sharp, but you're really in the home stretch of camp now. And so it's about preservation. It's about staying healthy, and it's about really turning the focus to that to the game since it's now i mean what 10 days away from the season opener they had a scrimmage on saturday final scrimmage of training camp and the coaches were taking that self-preservation approach i think a number of the veteran players the experienced guys some of the, a number of the first teamers saw limited or no reps at all um, again, in the interest of keeping guys healthy. I think it was a lighter scrimmage than, than the one a, a week earlier where maybe they went a little bit heavier, went a little bit harder to try and you know refine some things. But now I, I think you know they're, it's, it's tapering down because the most important thing now is being healthy on September 1st. So that's where we're at in training camp. And, and it brings to close a camp that has been, as you see point number three there, somewhat predictable. You know, I, I think whether it's the quarterback battle, I think has sort of played out as expected. Um, I think, you know, part partly there are just so many spots that don't need new starters. You know what I mean? They, you've got all five starting offensive linemen back. You've got all these running backs returning. You've got all the defensive line back. You've got all the secondary back. You've got Servasi Dennis back. You really just had a handful of positions that you needed to fill, a handful of starting jobs that needed to be filled in this camp. The outside linebackers were one of them. But even that sort of, I don't want to say solidified itself, but but did kind of reveal itself early in training camp. Bengali Kamara and uh, Bengali Kamara and Shane Simon are, are your top two outside linebackers. Simon likely playing the money linebacker position, Kamara playing the star. And you're going to get Tyler Wiltz in there, and you're going to get Solomon DeShields in there. These guys are going to get in for reps, and they're going to be on the field during the season. There's no question about it. They don't want to just play three linebackers. They want to play five or six. But it was really a matter in camp of identifying the top three and, and filling out the two deep of, of who's going to be available to play, who's going to be able to go out there and, and operate the defense and, and make plays and make an impact. And I think they figured that out pretty quick. I mean, we talk about breakout players. Who's going to be a breakout player this year? And, and the best option really is Bengali Kamara. And and I talked about him last week on the weekend recap. I've written about him a ton during training camp. Wrote about him a lot over the summer and through the spring. Because he's got an opportunity to be a breakout player this season. You know, in, in terms of maybe surprising people who are not in Pittsburgh or not following the program closely. But for all of us, we've all been talking about this for the past four months five months you know he was named the most improved player on defense in spring camp and everything has just i mean the arrow continues to point up for bengali kamara so there's not even a big surprise there i think we knew he was going to be one of the three best it was really a matter of figuring out who the other guy was you know Servasia dennis is one you knew bengali kamara was going to be one so it was a matter of figuring out who the other th that that third top linebacker was Thought for a while it might be Solomon DeShields. And he would play the star linebacker, the wide side of the field. And Kamara would play the money linebacker on the short side. Uh, it looks like Shane Simon, the transfer from Notre Dame, has elevated his game. And now he's going to be out there. And Kamara can play both outside linebacker spots. So Kamara, Dennis, Simon. That's your top three. And, you know, I don't know if we would have predicted that a month ago. But it became pretty apparent pretty quickly. And so there's not, you know, I, I'd say a predictable camp, and this has been one of my themes, you know, one of the things I've talked about a lot, either on the Wednesday night show or on these weekend recaps or writing that we've done on the message boards. And I keep saying it's almost kind of a boring camp, but that's that's not necessarily a bad thing because I think you know who this team is. This team knows who they are. These coaches know who the players that they have, and they should have a pretty good idea of what they can do, what they can do well, and where some of the you know weaknesses that they're going to need to cover up. The team is who we think they are. I think they have the talent level that we believe they have. And really, the last three weeks, and this week will be more of the same, are just a matter of waiting to find out 
how they bring that to the field. And so it's been a predictable camp and kind of in a good way. Point number four here, storyline number four, show respect. This was uh, midweek. The um, Associated Press released its preseason poll pick, came in at number 17. And um, that was right where, you know, we've talked about it all summer. I talked about how I thought Pitt would end up somewhere between 16 and 20 in the AP poll and the coaches poll. I think the coaches poll, they were 16. The AP poll, they were 17. And, you know, you, you, they're varying degrees of re- varying reactions to that some fans certainly even some players said that's a show of disrespect that's uh you know that's that's disrespectful to us we should have this we should have that i i honestly think you know and 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 also inevitably when when those polls come out we talk about oh these clueless voters this clueless beat writers they don't know what they're talking about they don't know the team and all this stuff i think now hold on to your butts on this one pit fans but i think pitt's been getting a ton of respect this offseason I really do. And and you might say, how? They're voted 16th and 17th. They weren't even picked to win the Coastal. And you're right. You're right. They weren't. They were picked to finish second in the Coastal. That's the highest predicted finish they've had as a member of the ACC. They've never been picked to be- finish better than third in the Coastal. Okay? They haven't been ranked in the preseason for like 12 years. Right, I mean, this is this is one of the storylines. They haven't have a preseason ranking in the AP of the coaches poll since 2010, and here they are showing up at number 17 in the AP poll, four spots lower than where they were when they finished the 2021 season. They were 13th in the AP poll at the end of the season last year. A team that had a Heisman Trophy finalist, a Bolitnikoff Award winner, won 11 games, and won a Power Five conference. It was a Power 5 Conference champion. Finished 13th. In the view of the AP voters, and and this is why I think it's actually a show of respect, they took a Heisman Trophy finalist off the team, a Boletnikoff Award winner off the team, and, and changed the offensive coordinator, if you want to put a little stock in that as well. And all of that, which is a whole lot, that's a whole lot of losses. When people talk about, I mean, when national people write about why this team may or may not live up to expectations or what the expectations should be, they always cite the losses of Kenny Pickett, Jordan Addison, Mark Whipple, Brendan Marion. They talk about that. And so it's, it's forefront for the AP voters. And I think a lot of us, expect, a lot of us expected the AP voters to, to see all those losses and immediately drop Pitt uh, like, a, like, a, like a lead weight. Maybe even out of the top 25. They only dropped four spots. If you want to consider dropping from where they finished last season. They only put them down four spots. Which I think is a tremendous show of respect. For what's coming back. For the program that Pat Narduzzi has built. And overall the state of this program and this team and this roster. And same thing goes with being picked to finish second in the in the Coastal. Never been picked to finish second in the Coastal. Yet this team which lost the Heisman Trophy finalist and a Boletnikoff Award winner, not to mention the coordinator and the receivers coach, comes in at its best Coastal Division prediction yet. Now, you might say they should have been picked to finish, they, they should have been picked to win the Coastal. You might say they should have been picked to finish in the, they should have been picked in the top 15 in the preseason poll. We could go back and forth about that. But I think it's a testament to, to the strength of this roster, to the depth of this roster, to the top-end talent on this roster, that Pitt was picked, I think, pretty fairly in the preseason polls by the AP and the coaches and the preseason ACC poll. I I think there's some respect there. I I think almost, almost getting a benefit of the doubt that, yes, you lost your Heisman Trophy finalist quarterback, and you lost your Boletnikoff Award winner wide receiver, and we still think you'll be second best in the Coastal. We, we still think you're going to be right there, right behind Miami. We still think you're a top 20 team in the country. And this is, I think that's some respect. I, I really do. I, and you know, I think Pitt fans are always looking for disrespect. They're always happy, not happy. They're always, they, they have a radar for disrespect. I don't think that's it in this case. I think actually pretty respected position. All right, final thing, a special announcement. This is not necessarily something you'll be talking about at the water core this week, but it is something that I figured this would be a good opportunity to announce it because it's sort of uh, tied to 
this weekend recap. We started doing this weekend recap beginning of the summer. I forgot when the first one is. I should have researched this. I should have looked it up to figure out when we did our first weekend recap. Um, but we do, I've been doing it throughout the summer, releasing this Monday morning video, and it's been a lot of fun. It's been fun to tape these things. Um, you know, gotten good response on the message boards and on YouTube and social media when we release them. Um, I, I, I like to think people are looking forward to it and enjoying it. We release it as a podcast in addition to the YouTube video. Um, and with the season starting, I decided that, uh, you know, this weekend recap is fun. So let's do it more. And instead of making it a weekend recap, let's make it something new. We're going to call it the morning pit. Monday through Friday, every morning, we're going to release one of these videos. Bring you up to speed on whatever news has happened in the last 24 hours. Whatever you need to know about. We'll have guests. We'll have interviews. We'll have different topics we'll be breaking down. This week, we're going to be working our way through the roster, sort of position by position, a couple positions at a time, just recapping what happened throughout training camp and where things stand with each position as we move through the rest of this week, this final week of training camp, and then we'll get into next week where we'll be breaking down Pat Narduzzi's Monday press conference. We'll be previewing West Virginia. We'll have guests on to do that and talking about whatever big topics are relevant. Uh, and, and prominent. Whatever you need to know on any given day of what's going on. It's it's going to be the way you start your day with pit news. It'll be about the length of these weekend recaps. 15-20 minutes. Maybe less. Maybe more. Depending on what's going on. We're going to do it Monday through Friday though. Give you something a little bit more to uh, get ready for each day. You know, just kind of a pit primer for the day. We're calling it the morning pit. It'll be released here on YouTube. We'll release it on our podcast feed on Apple and Spotify and all those places where you can find our podcast. Of course, we'll have it on the message on on the website on pantherlair.com. You can always uh, you know find everything right there. But I'm excited to start this. We're starting it today. I mean, effectively, I mean, I still called this the weekend recap. I wanted to kind of save the uh, reveal of the morning pit until. Um, you know, I don't want to reveal that until, you know, storyline number five. Uh, so I guess technically the first episode will be tomorrow. It'll be Tuesday. But we're going to go daily with this. And, uh, you know, through the week at least, Monday through Friday, we're going to go daily with uh, with a morning pit show. Like I say, 15, 20 minutes, somewhere around there, just to get you up to speed on everything you need um, for that day. Any news that broke, anything new that came out, anything uh, worth thinking about, observations, different topics, we're going to cover different things every day for you right here on youtube.com slash pantherlaircom. So help us out again, like this video, this weekend recap video, and, and just as important, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, you'll want to know when these videos get released each day. I haven't set on a specific time just yet. Still kind of debating that. We'll see what time they come out. Um, but if you want to make sure you never miss one of these videos, if you want to make sure that you... Uh, Always see the morning pit as soon as we release it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Turn on the notifications. You'll get a notification whenever we release a new video. You'll also get a notification when we go live on Wednesday nights. We're still doing the live show every week for an hour on Wednesday nights at 8.30. So we're going to have a lot of content out there. We're going to have a lot of video content out there. And uh, we definitely want, uh, want you to catch it all and be a part of it. So make sure you subscribe, youtube.com slash pantherlaircom. Got the, uh, there it is, subscribe button right there. Hit that, and uh, that's that'll that'll keep you posted, keep you aware and notified of everything we're doing. So like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Really, really appreciate it, and looking forward to do this. I think it'll be fun to kind of just talk a little bit each day, just, you know, follow the storylines, follow the narratives. It'll be just a, a daily little chat about Pitt. That we'll release each morning. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. I think it's going to be fun. Hopefully you enjoy it as well. And of course, you can get everything right there. PantherLair.com, Panther-Lair.com, Pittsburgh.Rivals.com. It's the most comprehensive source of Pitt sports news on the internet, football, basketball, and recruiting. Panther-Lair.com. We are under two weeks until the season opener. Just about 10 days. It's going to be here before you know it, and we'll have all the coverage to get you ready for the Backyard Brawl at panther-lair.com and right here on YouTube, youtube.com slash pantherlair.com. So thanks, everybody, for watching this weekend recap. Can't wait to talk to you tomorrow for the morning pit. We'll see uh, what happens as we move closer and closer 
to the season opener. Wednesday night, 8.30, we'll be right here for the Panther Lair show. Hope to see you then during the live stream. Till then, have a great rest of the week or a great couple of days. And really, we'll talk to you tomorrow morning for the morning pit. So have a good Monday. We'll see you on Tuesday.